What's up everybody, Destroy here. Welcome back to another castle of the Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Mode of 2, the Rise of the Witch King, patch 2.2, version 6. And today we have a 1v1 on Fortress of Eisen 2. Let's see who we got today. We have our first player, Dread Reaper as Men of the West. And his opponent for this matchup, also Men of the West, DJ Premier. So we got a Men Mirror. Which could be entertaining. Could be uh, not so entertaining. <laughs> Let's hope it is. We have a barrack start going for Dread Reaper. And we have a stable start going for DJ Premier. So they are starting different build orders. And I had that knowledge in beforehand, so uh, that's the only reason I even chose to cast it. <laughs> I don't want to watch Men of the West throw barrack troops at Men of the West. Right away, at least. But for now, it'll be different. So we'll see uh, See if this cap start will do well against the barrack start from Dread Reaver. It might, it might not. He's going for Goner Knights, of course. He's not going to go for crazy Rohirrim Rush, which would be insane. But we do have Gondor Soldiers coming out for Dread Reaper. So clearly he has no idea that his opponent is about to throw some cap his way. And of course both players are going for Rally Call as their starting power. As you expect, it is the best power to start with. Rebuild not going to be particularly useful, and heal, of course, going to be pretty worthless until you get a hero. Alright, the first battalion of Gunder Knights is on the field. And off they go into the sunset. And of course, they are continuing to expand their economies as they should. The first battalion of Gunder Knight uh, soldiers is on the field as well. And rip Gondor soldiers, pretty much. Although they did tank it very, very nicely. Dread Reaper throws them into hold ground sets very quickly. He's also throwing them into shield wall. It's going to take a lot of tramples to kill them. But they will die nonetheless. No matter how tanky you make them. They cannot counter this in any way, shape, or form. But it looks like DJ Premier is choosing not to engage them. I'm going to go harass farms, which is wise. Because really he doesn't have to worry about this really damaged battalion. I'm going to our soldiers now. And he can continue to harass farms while the pikemen are not upon him, which they are now. And he has lost a couple, a few of his guys there. So he needs to be a bit careful. But he is starting to transition into barracks troops, which is definitely wise. So he'll have barracks troops with cap support, as we'll just have barracks troops straight up for Dread Reaper. He's going the long way around, trying to do stuff over there. As long as DJ Premier keeps his alive though, of course, he can throw down a well and get those healed up. Or just get them level 2 and they'll start regenerating their battalion, of course, by themselves. But this will at least help him keep map control to some description. For now. I think he might see this. Well, he'll see it soon enough, at least, and the Gunner Knights will deal with that. No doubt. Now we have... Some Gunner Soldiers being brought up from DJ Premier. We have more Gunner Knights being brought out as well. And there they go. The Battalion's dead. They did a little bit of damage, but nothing too severe, of course. Alright, so they're off that way. He's got the soldiers coming in the center. Dread Reaper is creeping the War Glare here, and he's off to go for Faramir as his starting hero. Which is an excellent choice, I believe, in a Men In a Men I think Faramir is. Probably the best hero to start with, by far. He's great at countering Cav with his archer range. He's good at countering basic troops. Because he's just a strong archer hero. I think he's just a solid choice overall. Faramir is honestly an underrated hero of this game. He... I mean, pro players know that Faramir is very good. But, uh... A lot of people would think Faramir is bad. A bad choice. Maybe go for Boromir first. Sometimes Faramir is definitely the superior option. Because of his uh, archer abilities. Not to mention, he, later on he can toggle horseback and go uh, get to places quicker, if he so desires, which is nice. It's kind of nice that he has a ranger toggle. Also, it's really cool. Side note, of course. In the Rise of the Witching HD Edition, if he toggles a uh, from this cool ranger outfit he has to his horse, he becomes the Gondor 
knight leader guy. He puts on the gunner knight armor and stuff. It's super cool. I love it. But of course, that's only for this uh, HD edition that's not released yet. But when it is, when it's done, we can all bask in the splendor of Faramir on Gunder Knight's status. Speaking of Gunder Knights, DJ Premier is sending two battalions there. They are really cold. They're ready to do some damage. And he's also sent in troops. They have a very similar uh, composition, do they not? <laughs> Pikemen. Pikemen. Soldiers. Soldiers. And of course, both are putting their guys in hold ground stance. Well, actually, DJ or Dread Reaper is not putting his gun or soldiers in hold ground stance, I'll name it. Generally, you want to put your guys in hold ground stance and shield wall if you can. Make them as tanky as possible. Although, I can't say who was winning, really. Although, I'd say Dread Reaper is definitely winning because he's got Faramir support as well as he is right next to his barracks. So you can keep putting out troops here. The Dread Reaper's troops will last a while at least. They're starting to be finished off there. Dread Reaper also on the offensive here. Taking some farms from DJ. DJ is on the prowl on the bottom left, it looks like. Somebody's got a farm here, it looks like Dread Reaper does. If DJ can get around that cave troll. Doesn't look like he's often going to do so. This is a popular spot for a farm, I've noticed. There and uh, here, particularly. Seems very popular spots for farms in Ford's Horizon. Cheeky little farm spots, so. Always check there if uh, you're up against an opponent on this map, I guess. Especially when there's a cave troll still there. You won't really get, you know, there's nothing here. There's still a cave troll. Probably didn't build over there. But he did get enough. He did. So uh, he's probably not going to look for a while. Dread Reaper's force is getting pretty big. There's a lot of purple on the mini map. And he's got a hero as well, which is definitely going to be beneficial for him. He should really catch the gold. <laughs> no point in chasing down Cav you can't catch. It's not with everything. He has broken off some of them to go help there. And it looks like DJ Premier now has himself a man. Which is a good choice considering he's using Cav rigorously. So it should be very effective against all these Gondor soldiers that Dread Reaper is putting out. He's also putting out a lot of Rohan Spearmen, of course, but if he can avoid those, he should be golden. DJ throwing up a statue here, which is wise. The statue will give him the, the edge against his opponents, for sure. And now he's going for Rohirrim as well. Which is definitely a step in the right direction. Transitioning off of Gunner Knights is always advisable. Gunner Knights aren't particularly great calf. They're not bad by any means. But Rohirrim are far superior. And of course they can toggle Bomo, which is useful in times. Like this, when you don't want to trample uh what do you do anyway? <laughs> oh no. Frodo used the fear ability, I think it caused them to go trampling through the pikemen. Although, it seemed to have gone pretty well for him. He didn't lose either of the uh, battalions. And all the hobbits are dead from the arrow volley. Is it the power arrow volley? It is indeed. DJ is going for the power of arrow volley. So of course we have the summon hobbits for a, a reaper. So on top right we have a big skirmish by the cave troll. So the reaper is trying to, to creep the troll but not. <laughs> oh no and he sent some gunner soldiers right into the troll's path. That's unfortunate. That troll was wrecking house, to say the least. And DJ's moving in with a decent sized force. About three battalions or so. They will be met with resistance and Faramir, of course. Faramir is up to level four now. He can also toggle ranger mode, which, or night, night mode, rather. He can go night mode. Of course, he's not going to, probably. Generally speaking, no one will ever go night mode with Faramir, but I like the option. Of course, he does have Wounding Arrow, which is great. It's good against finishing off heroes as well. It does pretty pretty high damage to heroes. And it's got decent range on it as well. So it's a good, pretty good move. I used to think Wounding Arrow was so bad. I'm pretty sure I'm notorious for calling it dog shit many a time. <laughs> but now I see it's not dog shit. It's pretty effective by what it does. 
I guess if you compare it to Brand Slam Shot, sure. But it's a very much a different different ability, so. And even then, Brand Slam Shot won't do much damage to heroes at all, so it's like I said, very much a different skill not to be compared to Slam Shot. He's just doing some harassment with his calf. His calf's definitely helping him out here, I'd say. Dread River's not really able to keep up too well. And this is causing his farms to just go bye bye very quickly. So soon enough, Dread River won't have many farms. He's down to 428, 500. And we have DJ 288, 560. So he's slightly ahead. Only slightly, though. Like one farm ahead or so. Although, of course, statues do add to your command point limit. So uh, that's not entirely true, maybe. I think we only have like 10 now, if I'm not mistaken. I have to come out by 10. So that's not throwing it off too much. I believe the dormitory expansions also add to it, but I don't believe any players are using those, so. Not an issue. Aram, on the other hand, is doing quite nicely, He's doing a lot of work for them. Ooh, he barely got that Gunner Knight Battalion out there. Uh, because of the outlaw leadership from Aramur, it's helping. Uh, DJ from getting a lot of money that he normally would not have gotten. So Amor is definitely useful. We got Thilling Rangers now out in the field for Red Reaver as well. Not Red Reaver, uh, DJ. Also, whoever actually does actually manage to take a uh, troll down and capture the inn can get access to Dunan Rangers. Which I've been told are are statistically equivalent to uh, Thilling Rangers. They build slower and they cost less, I believe, is what they were, I was told. I could be misremembering, who knows. Certainly wouldn't be the first time. But that sounds about right. So they're just better to use if you can. But of course, you don't need to if you don't. If you don't wanna. It's far more safe to build from your own thing from uh, your base, of course. Although his archer range is pretty far away from his fort. Archer range is a Fairly tanky though, they have 4,500 life as opposed to like a 3,000 that bears at level 1. Stables at level 2 has 4,500 life as well. But they will die, of course, if they are singled out by a, a decent force. But I think DJ Premier's harassment with his cat is definitely giving him the upper hand in this game, if I'm honest. DJ's up to 13 power points. Dread Reaper's up to 14 power points. So actually, Dread Reaper's ahead in power point generation by one. Which isn't a lot. Gamer's down level 7, which. He got his last ability at level 4. <laughs> yeah. I do kind of wish he had more abilities. Maybe not more abilities, but his abilities were like tiered, I guess. I hate heroes that get their all their abilities by level four. It's <laughs> like what? Like Arwen, for instance, or something. Gets her last ability like level six. Or Aon. All the little support heroes get their their last powers very quickly. Which at a low point. Maybe it's a good thing, I guess, actually. Now I think about it. But at the same time, it's always nice to have something to look forward to when you level up something to ten, you know? We, of course, do have a Summer Harem army for both sides. Of course, it's going to be far more beneficial for DJ Premier, as he does have Cav leadership in the way of Theoden and Aomer, and he's actually going to try and take down Dread Reaper's fortress with it. That's where Dread Reaper is in no position to take down his fortress. I actually say, uh, saying that they have begun a base race, because uh, <laughs> Dread Reaper's force over here is far superior. There goes the rebuild from Dread Reaper. He's also getting a lot of pikes out. I think Dread Reaper might live through this if he's lucky. Although he might not. DJ wisely moving his guy away. Uh, if DJ fails though, DJ Premier will lose because he does not have any forces over here to stop this massive army from Dread Reaper. And unfortunately for him, the arrow volley catching very little. The fort has gone down. Will it be enough? He doesn't really have much to speak of, though. Most of this army will despawn, and that will just leave pretty much a single Gondor Knight battalion that's almost gone with two cab heroes against an army of pikemen. So I, uh, I think this will be GG for Dread Reaper. For 
DJ Premier rather. Although DJ Premier has not lost his fort yet. He managed to get one more battalion of Rohirrim out before losing his stables. And his fort hasn't taken any damage yet. So it is possible he will not die yet. Also, summon hobbits might save the day here as well. Hobbits throwing rocks at hobbits. A very vulgar display of power, so to speak. <laughs> Looks like DJ and Dread Reaper both taking over the farms over here. Dread Reaper should be pretty careful with that builder, though. Seeing as how he doesn't have any, uh, any way to replace them. Of course, Dread Reaper does not have any powers anymore either. If DJ can, if he can defend here, he might win the game. Perhaps. I think he has done it. He's getting enough troops out to defend against these waves of uh, what Dread Reaper is sending at him. And of course, Dread Reaper is forced to put out a lot of pikemen. Rohan Spearmen are very weak pikemen as well, and they're not getting do that many favors against these Gondor soldiers that are being brought out. We also have a House of Healing there, being brought up from uh, uh, Mirror, so he can heal up his troops around his fort, which is wise. Also get his heroes back for cheaper if he so desires. I don't know if he's lost them. I don't think he has. Nope. Theoden and Aomar are still on the field. Can you harass with some uh, some dudes, some Rohirrims. But I think I think at this point in the game, the Reaver might be. He's definitely on the back foot. <laughs> he's he's got his no fortress. He does have his hero though. Faramir has not died yet, and he's doing quite well. But that can be changed in a moment's notice. Good thing about Faramir, though, if he does get ran down by an army of Cav, unlike Brand, he can get on his horse and ride away, which is pretty nice. That does give him an advantage against things like that, because a lot of times you get your archer hero run down by an army of Cav, and you can't do much about it because they're very fragile. Is he going to do it here? He did it! There he is! Yeah! I absolutely love the skin. And the shield! Oh, so sick. I love that so much. There he is. The Prince of Gondor! Well, he's not really a prince, is he? He's the steward, the future steward of Gondor, I guess. Prince would imply he was Aragorn's son, wouldn't it? Which he's not. Well, Trevor Reaper can still win. He's putting out a lot of troops. He doesn't really need a fort. As long as he can get a superior force on the field and keep his Faramir alive, I think he'll do quite nicely. Faramir is very wounded, though. So we should probably get him out of there. For sure. And, ah, uh, I think instead of a house of healing, perhaps a boiling oil would have been a better choice for DJ Premier. But boiling oil would have saved him from all of this. That's unfortunate. I think DJ Premier is now going to lose. <laughs> he doesn't have enough troops to stop this. And the little force that is returning home is just Cav, and there's just armies of pikes. He's not going to get much done there, but he's going to try. My god, is he going to try? Surprisingly, a lot of them live through that cap charge, killing a lot of Frohan Spearmen. What the hell? Well, there you go. Trample all you like. But that said, uh, it's not entirely true, of course. You will still lose your cap very rapidly, charging pikemen like a nab. So, I wouldn't suggest it by any means. Tom Bombadil is being summoned in from uh, DJ Premier. That has potential for a giant Sonic song. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Very nice indeed. Will Tom Bombadil be enough to save him from destruction? I don't think so. I think at this point Dread Reaper has won the match. It'd be pretty hard for him to lose at this point. Considering how little DJ Premier actually has in the field. He may not have a fort, but he has a superior setup. He's keeping his micro and macro strong. 
And more so his mic his macro, of course. There's the boiling oil. Maybe a bit too late, but that eh, it's never too late, let's be honest. There it goes. And that should clean up any remaining troops. Boiling oil is incredibly good for defense against melee units. They have to be very, very tanky units to actually not die from that. And buffed, most likely, as well. So, uh, that's going to make it very difficult for Dread Reaper now to uh, send these waves of crappy troops at his fortress and actually kill it. Unless he can go in, bait the boiling oil, and then go back. That's the only way he's going to be able to do it. He'll have a, a small window of opportunity. Boiling oil comes back fairly quickly. Down goes the arrow light. That's probably going to kill all those guys. Indeed it is. And those gunner soldiers will see their families again. Unless they're off to their death, which they probably are. So maybe not. Dread Reaper is keeping the truce. It's pumping. Too bad he doesn't have a fort, because he would have a 25-point power. As he has a level 15-point 15, uh, 15 power right there. So that's unfortunate. How close is Dread Reaper? Or DJ Premier? <laughs> I keep mixing them up. He's not that close. There's the boiling oil while he's going by. Oh my god, Dread Reaper just walked right into it. That was disgusting. Dread Reaper's gonna need a siege weapon if he's gonna finish this, I think. So if he can throw down a siege works, that would be wise, for sure. Where's this? Does he have a builder, even? I'm pretty sure he does. Somewhere. Maybe. Maybe he doesn't. Wouldn't that be interesting if Red Reaper had no builder? Ah, oh, he did throw up a seed works. Although I don't know if he has a builder. Oh, there it is. DJ Premier sniped the builder with his cab army. Very nice. I'm pretty sure that leaves Red Reaper without any builders whatsoever. So if he can get rid of this, that'll make it pretty much impossible for Dread Reaper to win. And that will turn the game around for him. So that's... I might have sealed the deal for him. Very nice. A very crucial mission. Assassinate Builder. Although one siege weapon has been brought out. And that could be bad. He didn't manage to take down the siege works in time. Although he really shouldn't send his only trebuchet off by itself. He does have some pikemen, but... I think some more would be would be wise. Although he's trying to fend off this army of hobbits <laughs> using trebuchet to punish them as well. Although not doing a particularly good job of it, it's gotta be said. Some of them live through a trebuchet rock somehow. Which seems like madness if you ask me. But of course, here is the problem that Dread Reaver faces. He has no powers. And it looks like he has demolished all his stuff. And DJ Premier has won the match. Very nice. Well, there you go. I think losing his fort sealed the deal for him. Unfortunately for him. I thought he was going to win that for a minute there until the boiling oil showed up. And then uh, it burned all his troops. So, unfortunate for him. But well played by both teams. I think that was a good match. Nice to see a nice mirror. That wasn't too bad. Didn't use really much of the same tactics either, which is pretty cool. DJ went very heavy cav. And then we had very heavy troops for... Uh, Reaper, so that was pretty good. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that cast, and I'll see you guys in the next cast of The Rise of Witch King Patch 2.02. See you all next time.